the Hobie cat. Your Hobie cat. Yep. That's what we call cats, Hobie cats. Okay. Let's see. It says you're live, but I don't yep, see it. We're live. <clears throat> oh, I see it now. Test. Ooh, that's not good. Test. <laughs> I see you guys on there. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. I can hear a bunch of echo. Echoes? Let's see if it's... Might just be in my mind. You're fine? I say uh, it might yeah. just be in my mind. Oh, okay. Hey, if you're I... if you're listening, uh, type, type in and let us know how it sounds, all right? Because we're a low-budget system here, and uh, we're not quite like the Kayak Bass Nation yet, but... <laughs> Yeah, and Brady hears uh, voices in his head, so. You do? Sometimes. He talks in his sleep, that's for sure. Oh, okay. Alle- allegedly. <laughs> All right, so we're getting, oh, so Jennifer Solberg says it sounds good. All right, got Sandy on. We got some gals on here, and they're they're really good, too, by the way, guys. Good deal. Yeah. Good. Uh, they they know they know and we'll have I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a hey Sandy and Jennifer I'm gonna have a ladies night coming up so they haven't heard Rick Rick you, say <laughs> say say your full name Rick Rick Haxton there you go there you go okay I, I am just you. trying to uh, make this share this on my on my deal if it'll let me share it. Marty, you know what you need to do is have a uh, fishing moms podcast night. Hey, where you get on a bunch of like uh, Jackson Urbanus, his mom. Um, who's mm-hmm. another big mom? I'm sure Jackson or has Bobby. A mom. Bobby. Uh, yeah, she'd be a great podcast we piece. Were- <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be a good we one. Can get, we can get their perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah, best. We'll, we'll let you know. I'm going to have a, a ladies night bring a few gals on, and we're going to talk fishing with the gal. That'd be awesome. Uh, and then uh, let me see here. That'd be pretty good. Um, Rick, you need more chatterbaits, Chuck says. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, a lot, Chuck. Rick could personally sponsor three anglers next year and not run out of chatterbaits. <laughs> That's probably a f- – or jigs, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I – I can't turn on the heat because I just got second Sandy, so we don't we aren't currently <laughs> able to turn on the heat in my house. No, I'm just kidding. I uh I just get chilled easily. Oh well, there's I've also got uh Dwayne waiting in the green room. Oh I want to show off my oh, cool oh, half yeah. jacket. Yeah. So all right, oh yeah, let's get started here. We so all right. We guys uh we're gonna talk fishing here tonight. And it says test, but that's not really what it is. I just didn't uh you know what? Maybe I'll edit it. I'll edit it now. Uh, Brady and Rick. We have a surprise guest. It's Rick Haxton. Brady and um, Rick. Surprise. Also, Kevin couldn't make it um, tonight, but we'll have him on later. And uh, um, uh, but we got Brady here fresh off the uh, Caddo Lake Hobie BOS Series Championship. And uh, – you know, once again, Nebraska is well represented down there. And yep. we had, what, four, four Nebraskans of the 50, you know, and um, we had. Two in the top 10. Yeah. Uh, Rick was in the top 20 for AOI going in. I'm sure he's still in the top 20. Yeah. I think that I probably moved up in the top 20 on AOI. So, yeah, we yeah. Uh, we had a pretty good showing down there. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, Christine you know, was, what, sixth in AOI? Yeah. Um, there, so uh, yeah, Nebraska was represented very well, and Caddo Lake is uh, a little bit different. And we're going to talk about that, what what it's like down there. Um, but yeah. uh, first of all, how first let's ask you guys how how did you qualify for it? Well, I qualified through points. I was tied in uh, AOI for seventeenth. So okay. nice. Yep, I qualified in points as well. I was a little further down. I was in a twenty sixth, I believe, going into the event. So uh, I had a I had one good finish throughout the year, and then my other two were uh, like twenty eighth and thirty second. So now, for those of you who just got on here, 
Um, and we have a lot of people on here, guys. Um, Brady, Brady and Rick are both from Nebraska. Brady, yep. name that cornfield you live in. Uh, Gibbon, G I B B O N, right Gibbon. by Carney. Yep, Gibbon, Nebraska, right in the middle. And then Rick. I'm in Valparaiso, uh, just north of Lincoln. Yeah, he's in Valparaiso. Uh, we used to live by Valparaiso, too, my wife and I. We had an acreage up there yep. uh, by Branch Stoke. Um, and then what, what do you, what, now, Brady, you're pretty much full time fisherman, right? Mm, I'm a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Whenever, okay. uh, when, <laughs> sometimes I need a little extra cash, so I'll go cut down a few cedar trees or, uh, help out with calving or harvest or something but uh yeah that's kind of what i tried to do this year um traveled around a bunch and didn't have the season i was hoping for but this uh this placing that i just um was able to achieve down there in texas really helped out for the year good and then rick what what do you do now we i know i'm a i'm a heavy equipment operator i make dirt look good (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of that going on in the area. Yes, there is. We're uh, we're actually doing a lot of highway projects and roads around, so yeah. we're pretty busy. You didn't help with the Beltway, did you? Uh, I got a little piece of it, but not very much. Um, that was pretty much all aims. So, yeah. Well, if they ever do, it'd be nice to have a four lane from uh, from uh, Sabetha, Kansas, all the way up to Platts, man. Yeah, I've been uh, pushing for that, but they don't listen to me very well. Yeah, man, it's <laughs> dangerous out there. It is. There's yeah. been a lot of accidents. A lot of it's due to uh, farming equipment, actually. So. Yeah. So, so let's get back to uh, uh, going down there. So you both qualified by points, and you both uh, got into the checks this year, too, in a couple series, didn't you? Yes. Uh, Rick actually uh, won a couple tournaments. He yeah. had really good in Hobie this year. I got one check in Hobie. It was actually my first check ever in Hobie. I got fourth yeah. at Eufaula. Yeah. Uh, I led day one down there and then <laughs> fell off day two, similar to what happened at Caddo this year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I made my first Hobie check this year, which I really want to do. Made it back to TOC. Um, picked up a few little checks here and there in All-American and local clubs. But I had a fun year fishing around in some different series. Yeah, and then uh, Rick, how'd you do in the, the series? Uh, and the Ho- and Hobie, I I got a tenth place finish at Wolf and Fox, and then thirteenth uh, at Dardanelle. Um, at Seminole or not Seminole at Ufala, I got twentieth down there. So it was a pretty Look good season for me. Yeah, dude. Uh, the, the thing too, though, is that you know getting four in Nebraska. Of course, Christine kind of is kind of moved. She kind of lives down in that area. You know, have you, have you heard how she talks now? Yeah, I walked up to her and I'm like, "What are you? Why do you sound like that? You're not from here." And she's got this Texan accent. With, yeah. She's saying "y'all" all the time. I'm like, "What are you yeah. doing?" She lost her Midwest accent. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're you know we're the ones without an accent. Yeah, they all say we talk funny. I'm they, like, no, you I, guys do. A lot of people told me that I talk funny when I was down there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but you know. Really, if you think about the whole, I mean, AJ does a great job of scheduling it and getting great lakes. Yeah. But really, Nebraska's kind of off the beaten path. Mm-hmm. So right. there's a lot of travel involved. So to have the four Nebraskans that we did, Kevin, Christine, and you two. Um, so, well, tell us about the traveling part of it. You know, how did you manage that? Uh, Lots of long hours and talking to Rick on the phone and just, I mean, that I would say the average uh, trip distance for us this year to Hobie tournaments was probably like 12 hours at least because we got like, I went to Santee Cooper. It's like 22 hours. Um, you follow, what was you follow for you? My, for me, it was 18 hours, I think. Wow. Yeah, I think it was 19 and a half for me. Um, and then Caddo was like 12 for me. The, the closest national event to me, and probably to Rick too is Lacrosse, Wisconsin, which we didn't go back there this year. We went to Wolf and Fox, and that was a long trip too, like twelve hours. So I, that was yeah, only we, like nine for me. We have to travel a crazy distance, and so fuel really adds up, especially this year. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it's a long ways for us. We're not like in Tennessee where we just can run around and 
three hours here or six hours here. Yeah. And then, again, the best lakes are in those areas. I mean, in, in up north. I mean, here, yeah, we have lakes, but they're not very big. No. And we have some really good lakes, but they can't support a no. field like Hobie brings. No. So, right. Right. Yeah. You get, you know, you get past 20, 25 guys on ours and it's pretty crowded. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but but again, they get signature lakes, and uh, you go for some big bucks while you're doing it, and big bass while you're doing that. And then Brady, oh, yeah. the first morning, you hook into a monster. Tell us about that. Um, so I'm pedaling out to my spot, and there's a few people out. We're kind of fishing this flat out in the, kind of the middle of the lake, out from a where the river dumps in, and I'm. I have a spot right on the edge going down to the creek channel and then up on the flat, it's, you know, three or three and a half foot. So I sit up there, wait for lines in and look up there with my live scope and there's nothing there. And a few minutes go by casting and I look up on that flat and uh, they just start blowing up like crazy on shad about 60 yards away from me. So Mm. I take off and run up there real quick, hug my chatterbait out there and it loads up and, um this big old bucket mouth comes out of the water thrashing around and i right when i hooked her i knew she was a good one and um got her in the boat and uh threw her on the board and i mean she was a big she was a big one for sure it my yeah. the time oh, stamp on it was seven ten. so 10 minutes after lines in wow. i caught that fish and i i actually didn't get any good hero shots or anything because yeah, I knew I had to keep that school fired up, so I put her back real quick and ended up finishing my limit out on that school that I caught her out of. But wow. that that fish held out the whole tournament, yeah. um, yeah, for big fish, which I did not think it would, but it's pretty crazy. I I use I mean I won big fish like in one tournament in my whole career, so that was pretty awesome. So, so was there anybody by you when you caught it? A boat, a mud boat, yeah. and but not super close. And I'm not even sure that he saw me, but, and then there were some kayaks off. Uh, I actually fished within 300 yards of Brian Nelly, the winner and Nolan minor. Uh, the, uh, he ended up in fourth place. Yeah. So, wow. So there was a lot of big bass in that area where you were at. I think the, uh, I think there were about seven out of the top 10 that fished in the area that I fished. Jeez. So. Yeah, you guys found a good spot. You guys found a good. I've been down there a couple times, and they could be anywhere. And they oh, yeah. can. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's there's no rhyme or reason to it no. most of the time. <laughs> yeah, because and and the other thing is, here you go. Trees or flats? Why? Trees are well, flats. flats. Yeah, I mean, there's the flats where the grass is and the open <laughs> water, and then then you have the monotonous trees. After you cast to a few of them, you're like, oh my gosh, there's a million of them here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what what made you fish the flats versus the trees or vice versa? Well, I think Rick and I both kind of found that when you were getting off into the deeper water, that's where the fish wanted to be because they could tell that cold water was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, yeah, we caught fish off the trees, but everywhere that I went, even if I was catching them in shallow pockets around the trees, um, there always was deep water nearby. Maybe it was 50 or 60 yards away, but, and maybe it wasn't right on the edge of the deep water, but it was always close by. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And then, uh, so Rick, you weren't by Brady then. No, no, I was, uh, quite a ways. He actually fished at the only ramp that I didn't fish in practice. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I thought I hit them all, but Brady apparently usually, hit the one that I didn't. Usually so. Rick is the one finding my fish for me. I just want to throw that out there <laughs> that uh, I usually just piggyback off of what he finds. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, dude. So I was pretty yeah. proud of myself. So, this time. Let's see. So um, there's no motors. <clears throat> the Hobie series does not allow motors. So did you have – Just in practice. You guys had to paddle or pedal quite a ways. Did you have to pedal quite a ways? I- yeah, I did. I was all over the place. I was chasing fish, just trying to get my bites. Yeah. How how long did it take you to pedal um, at uh, first launch? To your oh, I literally got there right in time to cast. I did too. So we had about a thirty minute pedal yeah. each. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. How, yeah, that's how it was for us too. We did that. That was that Hobie cat, wasn't it? Hmm. Oh, that, that was no, that was mine. Oh, uh, yours? 
Okay. Yeah, it's all bugging me. All right. Got it. Um, well, here's the here. Let's, let's bring up the standings. Look at that. Uh, oh, wrong one. Which tournament is that? You know what? I don't know how I that happened. See it. But uh, I have the wrong. Here we go. How about that one? <laughs> you got some pictures. Well, the other one was uh, uh, that was the actually that was the first national championship. I mean, legit like KBF. Oh, one. the one Matt Ball won. Yeah, and Kevin was fifth in that one. That was yeah. the two day oh. one where we had the big front and all that. Um, that's that like a hammer. That's pretty much every tournament, though. <laughs> that one tournament where we had the front roll through, where that there were six tornadoes and a blizzard, <laughs> and, a, and people got heat stroke. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't your first rodeo. There's uh, Brady getting third in a Bassmaster, right? That was. Yeah, I remember that tournament. On, yeah. On and a then, frog. So look at so so Brady, ninety eight seven five. You were blowing everybody away that day. And then I had the smallest bag from what I see. Yeah. Oh, no. There were two other bags smaller than mine. Yeah. But out of the top ten, I had the third smallest bag. <laughs> and a lot of these guys were in that same yeah. area. Yeah, they were in that same area, mm-hmm. right? I'm Brian Nell in, was right I'm going to bring me. in uh, the Tourney X expert here, see if he can get in here. Oh, hey. what's up, Dwayne? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Dwayne. We have Dwayne Wally. I'm sitting here itch. I'm sitting here itching because I want to talk because I'm watching these leaderboards and I'm like, yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm looking at what was year. Look at <laughs> he's blocked out. Uh, Marty is. Yeah, it's all right. But uh, go no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I kind of um, well anyway. Really quick. Dwayne, for those that are on here tonight, Dwayne is the creator of this uh, software that that revolutionized kayak fishing. Now I want to go back in time real quick, Dwayne. Let you take over. You know, because I don't know if Rick knows Brady might, because Brady remembers when we were doing paper, like we come in, you know, and we just give the pictures at the shoreline. And, and oh, I've and done it in a couple tournaments. You did Rick? Okay, so yeah. how about this? The first ones ever, you had a pencil, a piece of paper, some fish on there with some dots, and you colored in the dot when you caught the fish, mm-hmm. and you got points right. for it. That never was the got, first one. I forgot that one. Now I don't one. remember. I don't remember those, Marty. That was way back. That was that was two thousand and four. That oh, sounds like a collector's edition type of thing. Man, <laughs> right? You still have those? those? That sounds like a board uh, game. What do you I mean, probably, man? Yeah, it was like a board game, but it was live, you know, and, and no pictures. There were no pictures. So it was all honor system. Um, the very first one, uh, we gave trophies. The second one, the prize was a six foot emotion spitfire kayak. Six footer. Oh man. Oh, that thing's wow. huge. Wow. That sounds and like when you could luge beat, down but, a snowy hill. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'd get in that one. Yeah, yeah so, so what I was looking at when you guys, were, you guys were switching back and forth. Hey, go go back to the other tournament that you had. The, the Matt the Ball one. one. You, okay, yeah, so. The Matt Ball. So, Dwayne, first of all, I want to thank you for that. But what, what wisdom do you have for us tonight here? Oh, whew. Man, I don't know. I don't know that my wisdom would do anyone any good. You guys, um, let's hear some life advice. What have you learned in your years as a business owner? It's a love hate relationship with what I with either this business that I've got, guys. I, I really will tell you, and I've talked about this this past week. A lot of people have called, and I mean, people call me all the time, and we sit and visit. And some people go, man, I can't believe I'm talking to Tourney X. And I said, the, you know, the owner of Tourney X. And I said, guys, listen, I said, I put my pants on just like you do. I said, I, I, I enjoy calling. I enjoy talking. And, and I said, I, I feel like sometimes that I shouldn't do that. And they're like, no, we enjoy it. You know, they, they enjoy the camaraderie. And, mm-hmm. you know, I even talked to a, um, a tournament director today and I didn't want to hold him up too much. And he's like, no, I enjoy it. We talked for a while, you know, and he's, and I said, well, I said that's kind of what separates. And I believe it's what separates us from other apps. Is the is the uh, camaraderie is the the respect that I give the anglers and they give me. If that makes any sense, you know. Yeah, um, yeah Brady, Brady like, if you get in a bind, you call me up. I answer the phone. I'm going to uh-huh. answer it. You know, no matter what the phone number comes from, or or even. I mean, Marty's called me or messaged me, and I try my best to instantly message him back. You know, right then and. Um, 
because that's the way I would want to be treated. And mm-hmm. I think life lessons are, 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 are the same. You know, we should, yeah. you know, we should do that for everyone, not just business owners and, you know, not this stuff, just mm-hmm. in general life, you know? Right. right. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're uh, very well respected uh, yeah. member of our community for sure. Lots of people you. talk very well about you. Dwayne has gotten me out of more fixes than I, you can shake. Right, Dwayne? Over the years? Yeah, year? I remember. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm one of the old guys that doesn't know technology very well. So, in fact, that's why we have this way. Who knows how this is going to work out? Because I keep freezing up here. Anyway, great. Dwayne, yeah, we've been on cattle together, Dwayne. Remember? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that day well when I was trying to pick your brain and you were not having it. You were like. <laughs> I was trying to get a fish. This is Marty. Okay, this is Marty. He's sitting there just kind of dead sticking going around those trees. Bloop. Oh, yeah. Bloop. Yeah. I mean, you think he was perch jerking or something, right? So he yeah. just blop, <laughs> blop, and then all yeah. of a sudden, yeah. you know, but uh, it blows me away to watch him fish. It really does. He's so cool. Yeah. But, don't stop. You just don't stop, you know. No, but, okay. Uh, I'll he, keep going. I'll get... <laughs> no, but we, uh, we really appreciate you, Dwayne. That's why I had you come on. I just kind of give us some insight a little bit. And then, uh, um, you know, because we're really uh, thankful. And I know there's other stuff out there and stuff, you know, but uh, I know that I'll continue to use your your software in our tournaments. What I really appreciate is when we started the major league stuff, um, you you made it so that we could put as many fish as we wanted in there. Right. That's pretty cool. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, have, I like had, the uh, different format. Yeah. We're, and we're trying to do, I mean, we're not, you know, it's, it's, um, we've got some other stuff coming. Uh, I know that, um, um, uh, up in Missouri with, with Josh Booth, he's called me up and he wants, uh, um, a multi-day team event. He wants mm-hmm. it split mm-hmm. into multi-days instead of like yeah. over, a, over a four day yeah. period, three day period. He wants them actually split into, into individual days. So yeah. we're working on that coming up nice. for this for nice. 2023. Yeah. Um, hey, there's but, Steve. But what I hey, what I want to go back to, uh oh, if you don't mind, go back to the go back to the like leaderboards Steve. a minute. Let's just look at something real quick. All right, now go back yep. to the look. No, just look at this one now. Day one, 96 inches. Day two, 96 inches. Day three, 101, 98, 82, 93. Now go to the one with Matt Ball. It's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, only 37 inches on day one, 57. No, on day well, one. well, that's because. That was a that was a different tournament, Dwayne. That might be misleading. You had to catch two fish. Oh, on that's right. Two on one day, three on another. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Okay. So we're yeah. looking at 80, 80, we're looking at what, 94 inches? Okay. Yeah. yeah. 94 inches. Okay. Uh, okay. That's Makes on sense. Kentucky Lake when in its prime, too. Yeah. Yeah. 229 anglers. Oh, that was like 2016, maybe? Yeah. We had uh, 800. The next year, I believe. Yeah, that was yeah. my first KBF yeah. championship, yeah. and yeah, that was pretty awesome. That's a good. When I got to that thing. Yeah. That kind of goes into good a uh, good discussion that we might talk about is what do you feel is too many? Is that a good good question? <laughs> um, I, think, I love uh, the two hundred cap. Two hundred, two hundred, like what the, the the Hobie events like they've been doing with the two hundred cap. I think that's good. You know, like I was at the KBF national here recently, and there was two hundred and what 40 that wasn't bad at all i i saw one kayak angler the whole time and i was right off the highway hmm. you know hey steve um, fields hey dumbo so you know 200 250 on the real big lakes but steve um, says 250 and, and i do like to cut i do like to cut i like that cut that says okay on 100 the top 100 are fishing that last day i don't mind that at all no, I, don't I would know. love I think it. I think That'd it really awesome. takes it down to a. Yeah. It really brings the cream to the top, you know. Yeah, I really think yeah. it does. And so, so even like, just imagine Brady, what it would have been like at Caddo if you'd have had two hundred there, and they all knew about that area. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, if there were two hundred there, you know, we had fifty. Yeah. And there, and there were you know six or seven guys on there throughout the day. Yeah. Day, so. Yeah. It would have know, changed the whole outcome. Have, I mean, Steve a Fields, lot more people on there. Yeah, Steve Fields says two fifty. Now, did we lose Rick? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He dropped her. Okay, did he come All back right. in. Must got hungry. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we we thank Rick for being on though, because that was a you know I I was trying to get some guys on from Caddo and and he we really thank him for being on tonight. Um, 
Shane Fields said hi, and he says 250 as well yeah. on those real big lakes. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and you know, in the boat ones, you know, they get like 200 and they can move yeah. around yeah. better than we can. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, anyway, um, real quick here to uh, power or finesse, Brady, what was working the best? Power for me. Uh, power yeah. for everybody, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can add Rick back now, maybe. But uh, okay. yeah, I let me. Oh, I'll find him here. Here, there he is. There he is. I pushed. I I pushed the wrong button. Oh, okay. We got him back. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll I, peek in. I'll peek in every once in a while. I like it. My yeah. uh, my baits that I was using down there was a uh, number one was a chatter bait, mm -hmm. number two jerk bait, and then I caught some on just a mix of some other things. But then. Yeah. The uh, last fish I caught was on a fluke. Um, mm -hmm. What'd you catch them on, Rick? I know you're catching them on uh, spinner bait stuff. mostly. Uh, actually, I caught them on everything I threw, man. Yeah. Uh, spinner you were bait, catching them on bait. A rig the last day. Huh? Yeah, A rig. I caught so many 11 and three quarters out of that lake. I think I caught everyone in there, to be honest with you. Wow. <laughs> they were doubling up on me, man. It was crazy. Man, wow. that makes me want to make the three hour drive over now. It really oh, that's fun. If you only lived yeah, three I would yards from that lake, like I'd be over there all the time, dude. Yeah. I would probably live there, honestly. I was thinking about going down there in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely go for it, Marty. That, that I can place give is you a awesome. spot where you can catch a hundred inches. I bet you when it gets <laughs> real when it gets real cold, I bet there's gonna yeah. be a pile of fish in there. Yeah. Um so let's see. So uh Hey, let me ask a question to Brady real quick. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people fish jerk baits differently, I think. But the, I mean, when I, the presentation of a jerk bait, when I cast, I mean, like when you would present, do you, do you twitch it all, you bring it all the way in, you know, or do you just like halfway in and reel it in, reel in and recast again? Or how, I mean, so just kind I, of pinpoint uh, areas or what? Um, Sometimes I'll use it as a search bait. Usually I like to use other things as a search bait more than it if I'm just fishing around. But usually when I'm using my jerk bait, I'm I have my live scope down and I'm looking for at least pods of fish. I might not be watching my jerk bait the whole time, but a lot of times I'll bring it about halfway back and if I haven't gotten a bite, I can kind of know where it is. So I'll turn my live scope and look at it and i can see if there's a fish following it or not okay. and honestly a lot of times there is a fish following it fish follow your lure a lot more than you think so oh yeah yeah but uh um, and i guess that jerk bait really lights up pretty good on a scope mm -hmm. and okay. so if you know if there's no fish following i'll bring it back in if there is i'll play with them a little more maybe throw it in reverse and get back off of them and keep working them but that's it's a spin I, bait right a suspending jerk yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. I usually fish the perfectly stunner. Yeah. Real quick. Let's go back in the blast from the past, Brady. Where do you, where do you see this, Dwayne? Uh oh. There, <laughs> Holy those, crap. Look at those guns. Yeah. Look <laughs> at those pipes, dude. That's from my paddling days right there. Yeah. Now, I got like a half mullet going. Yeah. That was at uh, Lake Wanahu. It was, that's CJ, my son. I don't, I'm trying to think. Is that a Van Every? uh cj josh and a little stormy oh it's josh elo that's josh yep. elo. he doesn't now, fish with us anymore but no i don't know what but, he's up to but brady did come up through our youth you came up through the youth competition mm -hmm. and you, I, you uh, I fished a lot of those. yeah you you went up quick and then uh uh there you go. how about that there's old ford ford jeans pliers knife you name it every time Farm guy. I don't know that either. Oh, then, I know. That's Skyler. That's Skyler. Yeah, he looks a lot different back then, but yeah. I uh, I was extremely sick that tournament. I don't know what I had, but I had some sort of flu or something. <laughs> oh, but you did a lot of the kid, the well, the youth tournaments, and then we had mm -hmm. you guys know Angry Bob Sturgeon made our he made our uh, awards handmade. Those are kind of cool. Those are yeah. extremely cool. Those he still makes sweet. a bunch of homemade yeah. lures out of. Uh, corn yeah. cobs and uh yeah. other things like that it's amazing and, and then uh and there you go brady is not uh, he's not new to catching big bass hmm so what is that, that fish on a jig 
when it was pretty dang cold, probably around the beginning of March. It was eight, 18 inches. Yeah, that was a good one. And then, a, oh, go ahead. What's that? No, it's amazing how, you know, just instantly he remembers everything about that fish. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, now, this was at a, uh, we had, Dwayne, we had an event that was like an adult kid event. And it was, that I, was awesome. We, I can't remember. Was it called Pro? So I don't. I don't even want to call. I think it was called. called the the Kid Pro Tournament. Kid Pro, Kid Pro, and so the adults matched up with the kid, and then it was the total between the two. But the pro could only add one bass, mm-hmm. wow. and the kid had to catch like different species. Is that that's not Peter? There is it. That's Peter. That's the second year, and yeah. that's when I was too old to fish as a youth. So I fished. So you with fished- Ethan yeah. Elo, which is yeah. Josh's little brother. Right, um, right. And, and he, he was on that day. Peter was kind of a mentor to you as well. He was, yeah. He uh, He's a really awesome dude. I haven't heard from him for a while. Yeah. I should probably yeah. hit him up. But, uh, yeah, the first year, Pete and I won. And then the second year, yeah. Ethan kind of took over and caught a walleye and crappie. And it was a multi-species yeah. tournament. So, yeah. he, uh, he really cleaned up shop at that one. We took home yeah. the dub on that one, too. That was there you awesome. Go. Yeah, you had the awards right there. Um, I'm sure Peter's very proud of you, by the way, too. So, <laughs> um, and then, uh, so here's Brady back in the paddle days with his uh, – that's a Jackson. Is that a Cuda? Yep, Cuda 12. First, I uh, – man, I, I'd go into – the local boat shop called the boat dock and they mm-hmm. carried Jackson and man, I'd go in there every chance I get. And I'd, I'd make guys at that thing and walk up and down it and look in the lids all the time. And yeah. uh, I came home. Drool over it. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they, uh, was all in my garage and it was set up on a stand and I was like, what the heck? And they bought it for me. And man, I, uh, I caught some fish out of that sucker. Yeah. And that was, uh, I had a Cuda, and I traded it for a Kilroy, mm-hmm. and then I we sold the Cuda to Christine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, had, Chris, yeah, Christine and I, um, mm-hmm. we had the same boat mm-hmm. uh, and the same car. We had a Trailblazer, mm-hmm. a white. I think she had a white Trailblazer as well. But then we had a Cuda Twelve as well. We traveled mm-hmm. to a few tournaments together, so that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> now here's Brady today. In a whole different yeah, setup. Up. Now, yeah, this is you <laughs> don't see Brady. Stormy. I hardly see him sitting down. He's always standing up fishing, usually. So, yeah, I can't do the sitting down deal. Right. I get too anxious. Yeah, and so that's today. So there's a look at the difference, man. That's pretty cool, huh? Before and after. Beard, no beard. Yeah. And then there's Rick. There's me. That's a chunk, dude. Was that at Cata? No, I just I I just plucked a picture for him so I could. That was it. actually I, uh, I can't tell you. That's my secret spot, dude. Ooh. That's just yeah. She's got it. You need to kind of. It's one of the lakes that I invited you to, Brady. Yeah. And oh. Then uh, here, here's uh here's the checks, fifteen grand. What's a guy do with that much money when he fishes? You know. He, uh. Is Bobby David. going? Bobby's going. Hey, Brady. <laughs> I gave I gave her the check and then I put the trophy on the table for everybody to look at. So nice. She uh she's definitely helped me out a bunch. So I'll definitely be buying her something nice for Christmas. There you go. Yeah. I'm digging the purple crocs though, man. When he walked on oh, stage, dude. I was like, what? Now, uh, now tell me, did you did you wear something warmer on your feet during the tournament? I had on so in the morning I put on a pair of wool socks. Yeah. And then I take some of those foot warmers uh-huh. and the yeah. adhesive ones, put an adhesive yeah. foot warmer on each foot and then put a wool sock yeah. over it. Yeah. And then those are actually my dress crocs. <laughs> and I, <laughs> my, I put on my fishing crocs and uh, just go to work. Nice. <clears throat> keep them keep I like my feet that. warm. Don't go fishing, oh. just go to work. Go to Did work, it- man. Did you know you had second wrapped up? Because when you were on the leaderboard, it was like fourth and fifth. And I thought, oh, uh, he's going to maybe get third. And then then they announced the other guy, oh, he's going to get second at least. Because we knew Brian Nelly had a a big bag again. Yeah. Yeah. um, No, I – the only time I looked at the leaderboard all weekend was on Sunday after I caught my fifth fish. Um, I think I had like 91 or something. Mm -hmm. And I saw I was in third. Uh, right in front of Nolan 
and right behind Justin Patrick. And I knew that that wasn't going to hold out. Like, and I, you know, I wanted to get second. I didn't want to get second, but that's all that I could get on that day. And, uh, I'm like, I need another big fish. So I fished all day, man. And, uh, fished around, fished wow. around at the end of the day, I still hadn't looked at the leaderboard, but I knew I was falling probably. And I went back in this area with Ewing Minor, and I asked him, like, how's it going today? He's like, absurd, dude. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, I have 96 inches. I caught I have caught him on a dang glide bait. I'm like, what in the world? And uh, he's like, be ready because they're busting up on the shore. And so I pick up my fluke right at the end. I have, like, two minutes to go, and I see her blow up. Um, and huck, huck my fluke up there on the end of the cast. I mean, I couldn't have cast it any further. She was right at the end of it. And uh, she smoked it, and I wrenched her in and boat flipped her and got a picture. And two, the timestamp was like two fifty nine and thirty seconds. So I had like a minute and a half yeah. to get the picture, and um, yeah. that put me up there a quarter of an inch ahead of Justin Patrick. Wow! Uh, to and that that fish was <clears throat> worth seventy five hundred dollars because I would have gotten fourth instead of second. So moved me from seventy five hundred dollars up to fifteen thousand. Wow. That, and it yes. happens a lot. It happened, mm -hmm. actually happened to me there. I was by Richie McMichael. I had four fish and I was trying to get my fifth one. I said, okay, I got time for one more. I dinked it. Here comes this fish out of nowhere. And I put him on the board and literally like, like you did there. And it won me quite a bit more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you never give up. You know, uh, you got oh. fish to the end. You give up. Oh, Marty froze up. I like the picture that he froze yeah, he's like, Okay. Uh, there he, there he is. Freeze up? Did I freeze up? Yeah. Yeah, you're back again. But the KBF I got uh, in the last, uh, like, two minutes there, got a 19 and a half inch off a road bed right by the ramp. And mm -hmm. uh, so you never, that's why you keep casting to the end. Oh, so uh, what, what were your three days like, Rick? What did you have each day? As far like, as uh, limit wise? Right. I think day one, I had like 80 and a half. Um, <clears throat> that was my best day. And then it just, day two was like 76, I think. Maybe even lower than that. Um, it was, honestly, it was a grind in that area. I figured out on day two that they were busting on shad like what you found, but they were in a lot deeper water. Mm. Um, and they started hitting the, the, um, the A rig. And I actually caught an upgrade, but it, I caught it too late. I got it in the boat and it was too late to submit the picture on day two. So, yeah. And then day three, um, I just kept catching 11 three quarters, man. I couldn't get that 12. So it was how just many guys were you launching with over there? Uh, day one, there was like, I think there was nine, nine or yeah. 10 of us. That's about and what then, I had too. Then day two, uh, I think there was six and day three, there was only four or five of us over there. Hmm. So Did, uh, in, the, in this tournament, they, limited us to a certain number of ramps and they actually gave us legal launches so we only had 10 ramps to choose oh, from oh, and uh yep. so you got 50 guys so you think that we kind of spread out but my ramp i think the most i counted one day was 12 rick saying he had like 10 mm -hmm. so there's a big chunk of the field right there at two ramps yeah um, yeah kind of jennifer solberg asked what your favorite lakes were this year either guy <laughs> wolf and fox wolf and fox hands down yeah that place is amazing yeah. rick got his check there he got you got 10th right yeah uh no i got yeah i didn't get a check there i, I finished one spot of the money there i got my check at uh dardanelle that's right yeah. uh <clears throat> wolf and fox was smallies wasn't it yeah that was oh my i was so like i didn't want to set i didn't even set the hook on my last fish it set the hook on itself Jeez. it jumped up next to my kayak and i didn't even know what was happening hmm. Wolf I just Fox stuck my net out and grabbed it. Um, there's a place at Wolf and Fox where I can't remember the town, but it's just the river and you're fishing like in the downtown of this little mm -hmm. historical town. And there's a, there's cool bridges going over it and just these kind of seawall looking deals. It was so, it was a really cool area. And I know Calvin, our new buddy, Calvin D, we met him down at, uh, TOC, he uh, he won that event. He had some just behemoth smallies from that place. It was unreal. Hmm. So hmm. I was just running some numbers while y'all were talking, and 
There was 700, and 700 plus fish caught in three days at Caddo. About 50 guys. The, the average the average length was 17 inches. Jeez. That's nice. That's average. So that's nice. Incredible. Do you know how many fish over 20 were caught? Uh, I'd have to run them. I've just pulled it up and I'd have to go through and pick them out. That's amazing. Know. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. There was a lot yeah, of fish over 20 caught. There were a lot. Yeah, I can wow. I can't believe nothing over twenty four got caught honestly because the fish that Calvin caught was like twenty four and a half or something in practice. But Jeez. there's monsters in there. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. If you're if you're gonna go try to catch a hundred inches and your PB, I'd say cattle would be an amazing place to go. Yeah. Uh, I I love you fall up. Lots of people don't like it. it. You can fish ledges. You can fish up in grass. There's like a million gators there, so you get yeah. to go look at dinosaurs the whole time. Yeah. Big gators, yeah, oh, they're huge. They bother you? Oh, no. I mean, actually, you know what? They didn't bother me. I thought it was cool, but if you go to the winner of you follow, his name's Bailey. How do you say his last name, Dwayne? Embrick you know? or something like that, or yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know you're talking about, but I, I can't yeah. pronounce it either. So. I can't either. I just call him Bailey. He's from up in head, he's from up, I mean. up in Pennsylvania somewhere, right? Or Cayuga Lake. Lake. His home lake's Cayuga, and we're going there next year. So watch out for him up there. Oh, but, New York. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He uh, he has a video on his YouTube channel, and in that tournament where there's these this little channel, and then on both sides there's gator grass or whatever they call it, this floating stuff. And I roll in there. I'm like, which side do you want me to go on? And he's like, you go on that side. I'll go on this side. And we're going along at fishing, and you see this gator head out in front of him, and all of a sudden you hear it start like growling. Yeah. And I look over, and this gator is laying like this in the water, and then does this, and is sticking like half the way out of the water. And this is like a ten foot gator with her head up in the air, and it's growling at him. And I see him, and he just has his hands on his thighs, and he's just sitting there looking at it, and he doesn't know what to do. He just froze, <laughs> and I'm wow. like. Glad I didn't take that bank, dude. <laughs> but it's on his YouTube channel. If you go look it up, it's on one of his uh, chasing hardware videos. He does a really good job on that. But that was a funny video. The uh, breeding season here is in is, is in May, and we've got some, mm-hmm. you know, in uh, um, April and May, March, April, May. And um, I remember one year I was fishing, you know, our local lake, Ross Barnett, and got chased by one. And I wasn't in a really? pedal drive, and I wasn't in a motor. I was paddling and it was like a attack 140. And I'll tell you, dude, I don't, I don't, it, it didn't bother me. It's just that she was chasing me. It, mm-hmm. it, you yeah. know, when they chase, it's a different story. And this, yeah. I look back and all I could see was this wake coming. It was this huge wake. And I was oh, trying man. to just, man, I was just, and, uh, and it was a, it was a narrow area, you know, probably a oh, hundred yards across and it's all marsh. So there's no getting out and running. <laughs> so anyway but yeah, that it's, it can sketch. be yeah that time of the of, year you do have to kind of be aware mm-hmm. of them and kind of yeah. give them some yeah. space for sure wow yeah. i know sam rayburn has them and i had some little encounters with them down there too oh yeah i did too yeah it, boy that's uh yeah that's why i used... touched that seven footer i thought it was dead it was oh, not no. dead oh no yeah <laughs> Oh, I just wanted to see what it felt like, so I grabbed its tail, and it didn't like that very much. Don't oh. do that; it's not a good idea. I wouldn't go near it. <laughs> so I hope one day well, I can make it up there, and you're y'all's neck of the woods, and fish, fish Wanahoo one day. I'm still trying and hoping and wishing I can get up that way. But yeah, well, you're welcome. Happy. You have a place to stay, probably several places to stay if you want. Oh so. yeah, I appreciate it. I uh, love Wanahoo; it's a pretty yeah. cool place. Just somewhere different, you know. I fish here. And I don't get to travel a whole lot because I work three yeah. jobs, so it's it's hard to get away. And, and if you ever get up here to Nebraska, place to go is Western Nebraska. Yeah. You got Merritt, Red Willow, yeah. Swanson, uh, lots of cool places out there, and you can't beat the scenery out yeah. in the Western Nebraska. It's completely <sighs> different than you've ever seen. Oh, okay. That's where I started out kayak fishing down there, in Rock Creek. Will Rock have Creek. A, that will Creek. It'll have a return. It will return to its glory. You, you guys need. <laughs> I, I think I know. There's a video on uh, Kevin's YouTube. I'm not sure if yeah. it's private or not, but uh, 
they go out fishing and it's like snowing yeah. and they're it's super cold and then at night they're sledding down the hill in their kayak. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, was a good video. Well, see, the thing is, during that year, the they had they had uh, elevated the water coming in. So we had eight wells coming in, and the water was 57 degrees, so it never froze. So mm-hmm. the big, anytime right. the big bass were just everywhere in there, up in that area. Right. And so we just caught tons of them. And then, but we've caught a lot of 22s. But the Game and Parks guys told me when they shocked that lake and drained it, they pulled a 13 pound, eight ounce bass out of there. Really? And, and it's up in uh, Hyannis somewhere, they said, well, a pond up there. And then there's Ooh. several, they have several 10 pounders that are, they have in a holding pond right now up at the hatchery. Really? Really? Yeah. And that that's came out of it. So they're trout fed, that's why. I mean, they're huge. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I used to catch a lot, of, a lot of big ones out yeah, of there. So, yeah, Nebraska's got some good stuff, Dwayne. I mean, good, good way. You know, if you ever get away, just, Come on up. I know there's you. There, everybody here. Plus, you, you'd have plenty of places to stay. Everybody knows you up here. I oh, appreciate yeah. that. Um, but, on that. So, in closing here, um, I know we. Like I said, this is just conversation. So you know, um, and then, uh, but you guys, congratulations on a great year. I didn't tell you guys that yet, but congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just, I really, here. I really envy these guys. Uh-huh. I really do. I mean, it's and and you, Marty. You know, for that matter, because on this end, which doing what I do, mm-hmm. I get to watch what happens on the screen, you know, and I don't get to mm-hmm. embrace that part of it. And it, it uh, drives me nuts sometimes because I, I want I to I yeah. go. And yeah. I, wanna, I don't know how you can look do. at all those pictures and not touch them. Like, I, I'm a guy that's got to touch things. I want to <laughs> touch the fish, you know. My personal and- best is 24 and a half. 24 and a wow. half. Wow. Wow. But yeah, push. I mean, everybody in the kayak community is very thankful to people like you and AJ and uh, people that are sacrificing, you know, running these tournaments and running our tournament directing system so that we can go out there and just fish and not have to worry about it, you know. Uh, right. So we really appreciate that. I know, yeah, I know there was a few sketchy moments. A few people had a hard time submitting from Caddo, but that was a lot of service issues. It just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to put it off on service, but. It's when you've got 50 guys and you've got three that are having a hard time submitting, it's, it's generally a service issue or just something with their phones. But, right. you know, mm-hmm. I can say this about Hobie and, and their and their group and, and everyone that fishes the Hobie events. Uh, I very, very rarely get a call from anyone in the Hobie group. OK, I mean, literally, probably out of the 10 or 11 events that they ran this year, I probably had a total of five calls the whole year. Mm. And that's phenomenal. That's great. Because. You guys are resilient, number one. You know what I'm saying? If, if if something happens, you figure out a way to make it happen. You either go find your buddy, you get another. I mean, Matthew Scotch called me at the last minute. I mean, he was he was like, hey, man, he says, if you, can, can you reset my password? I says, why? What's going on, Matt? And he says, uh, dude, my phone took a dump, and I've been – he said, I've been taking pictures with a buddy's camera, me and, me and a buddy of mine. I would catch a fish. He would bring me his phone. I would take a picture. So mine and his are on the same phone. He said, but I don't have my login to get in. So you see that just, that just proves to you that it's resilient. You figure a way to make it work. Right? Matt Scotch or, was fishing butt naked for half the day. Well, he because, jumped in at 50 degree he had, water. To find he had his to phone. get in to find his phone and he didn't find yeah. it, but then he fished without clothes for the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, these stories like this, these are just tons of stories that we can, <clears throat> and everybody has their own. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're yeah. fun, dude. Yeah, yeah I miss well, the OG days. I, I love talking to Kev and Marty and the Workmans and you know hearing about those OG stories. There's a lot of st- one there was one time down. This is no kidding. This is a God thing, Brady. <laughs> right here. I was up in the Clinton Lake area and my sonar didn't work and I had no reception and I had to get back and I didn't know where I was at. Ooh. And Armando oh, yeah. Sacedo came out of nowhere like an angel. <laughs> hey, you can come with me. I know how to get back. But I had no <laughs> idea how to get back. Wow. It, it, that, you, that is a – Clinton Lake is up there at uh, Caddo. It's like way back. It's a WMA. Yeah. And it's just an expanse of trees. And it's yeah. it's a forest Yeah, I'm looking filled with water. And you I've can get up, lost I'm in t- there. I'm taking a look at it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, but there's fish in there. There are fish in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's easy to get lost on Cato. I had to use my GPS to get back a couple times. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's uh, it can get it there's can get weird sounds spooky. out there too. Yeah, and, um, and when you take <laughs> off in the dark, it's really spooky in there. Yeah, you know what? I talked to a low. He no, who did I talk? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I talked to somebody. No, I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to the Mercer podcast, and either he or one of his friends were talking to a guy that had been from that lives by Caddo and he said if you want to see a Sasquatch I will take you and show you a Sasquatch at Caddo Lake <laughs> and there's weird noises out there dude so if you believe in Sasquatch apparently that's the uh that's the place to go there's a lot of uh you hear banjos lots. too right oh <laughs> yeah banjos dude <laughs> I, my favorite part of that whole place is you drive down the road and the whole week and weekend, there's just these old rundown shacks, and there's always a couple trucks at them, and they sit there out in lawn chairs, just these old men. They sit there and watch cars go by all day long. All day. Whole week. It, it's just a slower way of life down there, but I like it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We need that sometimes, though. Yeah. I mean, we we as the two guys in the diagonal one another, you guys – Yeah much younger than we are after a three-day tournament pedaling i don't know how many miles and freezing my butt off i needed a day of that to just sit down and yeah. decompress a little bit but yeah i should have, have to right and drive, drive forever you know i don't know how far did you drive from nebraska what is it 12 hours is it, is it, yeah. yeah it was about 13 total stopping for fuel and stuff that's yeah, a short yeah, drive though for guys did you guys go together no just in spirit <laughs> on the phone with each other the whole time oh, pretty yeah. much now Kev, kevin did he go by himself too then yeah he drove down uh later in the week actually oh okay. he, he brought his oldest boy though he yeah. his oldest boy is gonna be kicking everybody's butt here in a few years probably he's coaching as them. long as he does his homework like he says he's going to yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> he yeah, just right. my, my mom actually flew down uh oh, yeah. like wednesday night um or wednesday and she cooked me food, which was really awesome. Dang. And then she rode back with me. And the last like hour and a half or two hours, I let her drive on the way back to Nebraska because I was so done and I slept the rest of the way. So, wow, that's cool. So you're talking yeah. about your mom and at the you know during the event how she's kind of helped you out financially through this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, a great I, story. I live at home and. You know, she really believes in me and believes in my dream and it's been pretty awesome. You know, she's get she sacrificed quite a bit to uh, help me get out there and she's a pretty good mama. She used to she uh at the first event that I ever cashed a check in, I was fourteen years old. It was a fall, it's called the spooky bass here in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh we my mom had to paddle with me the whole tournament for a legal guardian, you know, and it was freezing and windy and she hung in there like a champ and we got fourth place and got ninety dollars i think and man <laughs> ninety dollars to a 14 year old kid fishing that's what, will that's, uh, what mama, that's what good mamas do <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's, Jennifer. Yeah. that's right that's awesome. She's a you good know mom. you know uh, Ma- marty over there he comes up with some of the oddest tournaments up that way but he makes them uh-huh. fun he, he calls does. me up. Hey, man, can we make it do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. we'll figure. Let's figure something out, you know. But yeah. you know, Marty and I've had a lot of conversations, and and uh, he is really um, kind of a mastermind, just running these events and getting you guys, the young, young, the the young anglers mm-hmm. involved. You know, the mm-hmm. ones coming out of high school, and uh, we we probably don't thank old Marty enough for what he does. And I tell you, we all should appreciate the. You know, yeah, the Marty's, the the God, yeah. Marty's the godfather of kayak fishing, you know. Lots yes, of people don't is. know that, but <laughs> he, he was a crazy old man sledding down snowy hills yeah. at Rock Creek, yeah. you know, when I was well, still crapping yellow pretty much. I, you know, you know, thank you guys for that. But what kind of, kind of <laughs> news really when I got made fun of for kayak fishing? I mean, I got laughed at and I mean, yelled at. We still get made fun of for it. I, we I get made fun of. Uh, 
but uh, it is kind of fun coming up with unique events. And by the way, speaking of that, we're going to have, again, our second year in a row of uh, we have a, what we call a Monday night league where a parent or, a, or an adult pe- teams up with the youth and they uh, it's they fish together. And it's the best. I think I can't remember how we did it, but it's the best for each one. And they combine their score. And then we have an AOI for it. And this year we gave catch boards. Hayden Hall teamed up. He helped us out quite a bit this year with that and with some kids. And But it got our kids going. And then, um, you know, then they can eventually get into some tournaments and stuff. They're well-versed in all this, you know, by the time they get out. We have a lot of kids out of this area that have gone on. How, Hayden's one. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Ford, Ford did pretty well. Ford you know, has yeah, we, uh, we, we did a scholarship with Hayden, you know, a few yeah, years did. ago. Yeah. Yep. That was yeah, awesome. a hammer, if, man. If it if it weren't for the youth tournaments and the tournaments that I was allowed to get in when I was so young, and to where I'm just I just kind of grew up in the community, you know, I yeah, yeah. you know, I might have fallen out of it, but it it's an awesome community to come up in and you learn a lot, and there's so yeah. many guys with awesome life experiences that can mm-hmm. give you advice, and that's a great place for a kid. But uh, some guys that you should have on here, I don't know if you've had them on before the uh, the Husker Bass collegiate anglers you know that yeah, that college stuff is pretty awesome and i've been actually trying to think because uh they've started uh collegiate kayak fishing down now like carson newman um yeah, yeah. and a, a couple other schools but yeah um i don't know the logistics of the huskers competing in them because they're so far away from the mm-hmm. those teams actually do it but I'd-, I'd like to put that idea in their head somehow i don't really know anybody over there but yeah that'd be cool actually today i was talking to um um the the coach at carson newman and um we've we've been having conversations the past couple of days now he's he just signed up for a tournament director and uh he's going to run some individual events for for just carson newman i think they have one um Mm. i can't think it's called battle at battle at the hollow that they fund, mm-hmm. you know, there's two, two, uh, two colleges that battle it out. So they're going to, he's going to run that. And mm-hmm. we were talking about one thing he, one thing he wants would like to do is start pulling and start going, actually going backwards and going to the high schools and start working on high school yeah. levels and getting mm-hmm. those guys involved. So he has a feeder system coming into these mm-hmm. colleges, whether it's his college or not, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. But um, I That'd think there's cool, a, there's cool. an open, there's an open for that. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple announcements. Um, as you guys know, I'm trying to catch 2022 fish. I'm, I'm 10 away, I think. And so oh, man. Uh, hopefully Saturday. So if people want to guess, there's a place to guess on my timeline. There somewhere. Whoever guesses the closest gets a $25 Bass Pro card. And then, uh, the whole my cream soda fundraiser is still on. Um, what? It's a long story. I don't get it. <laughs> you and the cream I mean, sodas. Yeah, I, I mean, I get beer, the cream soda oh thing. My, but... You guys know I drink a cream soda after every tournament. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. anyway uh, I can't find my stickers, money. Marty. I don't know where they are. I got a whole stack of them. You got, yeah, you got some. So, anyway, whoever wins that, um, and that's a cream I'm not soda. Fish for that one. We're going to draw <laughs> for it. But whoever wins gets to give that money to an anonymous family for Christmas. Mm, nice. And then, um, um and then on the, on my website kayakjack.com it's fully automated now so people can book uh trips without calling me and uh we have ice fishing <laughs> trips coming up so yeah uh, that's awesome yeah so that a lot, lot of stuff in the works and you know I, there's a lot of schedules coming out by the way people out there i will i know carrie Nider made a schedule i'm also making one it's, it's got some details of each week. And uh, so if, if you're out there and you want to be shared with that, just let me know, but I will put it out there eventually. So that you, so people can see all the, all the stuff that's out there um, in the region area, whatever, Kansas. Or Iowa, Iowa. Um, a lot of people want to fish different stuff sometimes. So there's a lot of stuff out there for people. You know, it used to be just uh, spooky bass in the kayak Palooza. Now it's like every weekend you can go three or four tournaments within a couple hours. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, awesome. So yeah. a lot of stuff. So yeah, shout outs, Brady. Shout out anybody here. Oh, um, I got, I got go ahead, Brady. My mama. Yeah. For sure. Bobby. <clears throat> uh driving or flying down to make me food. 
at Caddo and other things like that. I mean, got such a good support crew back here at home rooting me on. I got an awesome prayer squad, my grandma and a bunch of her friends. There you go. Uh, I got to spend a lot of time with her today. That was awesome. I went out there and we conversed a bunch about Jesus and what happened at the tournament and whatnot. Um, and then the sticks, you know, yeah. uh, used to be Capital City Clash. That's where I got my start in kayak fishing and got lots of support back here. And Rick and Kev and everybody um, got an awesome crew to travel with. Uh, and then my sponsors, I'm sponsored by our uh, our awesome kayak uh, dealership here in Omaha, Nebraska called Select Sail and Sports. Mm-hmm. Mike and Don mm-hmm. run a really tight ship over there. They're really awesome people. And then mm-hmm. I'm on the uh, Hobie fishing team, the national team, mm-hmm. um, and also Mossy Oak Fishing. They, uh, they've got a lot of awesome uh, fishing clothes, you know, like lightweight, just uh, sun, sun masks, sun shirts, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my sponsors and my support crew, but I know Rick's got a lot of awesome sponsors too. Go ahead, Rick. What do you got? Shout out. Uh, well, I'd like to, you know, first and foremost, say thanks to Kevin Workman for getting me started in kayak fishing. Um, him and Tori Bama actually are the ones that got me started in this. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks to Brady for traveling with me all the time and motivating me to do better. Um, uh, select sale and sports they don't sponsor me but they are awesome like brady said mike and don they're always there if we need something mm-hmm. um fish 365 custom rods he makes some awesome rods for me um ice hole power keeping me powered up on the water state bank of table rock they sponsor me for all my trips and stuff uh, val tavern I'm trying to think of all the stuff it's hard to remember them all <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, cool. just a big shout out to the whole kayak community, Marty, for helping me out in the tournaments. You know, he's talking to me in conversation. And yeah. Just everybody, man. The sticks are awesome. Um, just thanks to everybody that supports us all. We're out there, you know. Cool. Yeah. What's your connection with Table Rock Bank? How did you? Uh, one of my uh, friends actually is he runs the Roca branch, uh, Spencer Kunze. Oh. He's, a, he's an amazing guy. Wow. I, I'm a graduate of Table Rock High School. Oh really? <laughs> so you probably know the Coombsies. I had I had an account there. I you know I, I don't know how many checks I bounced at that big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get me cool. loans for all the stuff I need. So yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, well, thanks guys, and then uh, like I said, we'll be on YouTube later. So um, sweet. Yeah, there, yeah there. thanks to everybody tuning in tonight and yeah. filling the yeah. feed with cool comments and stuff. I appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Guys. We do this every Wednesday. Sometimes it's a half hour, sometimes it's an hour, but uh, look forward to having more people on and maybe in the future too with events and so forth and premiering events. If you guys ever, anybody ever has an event they want to premiere, just get on here. Dwayne, we always love having you. You know that. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for, so, thanks for the, thanks for the invite. I mean, I was, yeah. I was, I was packed up on the, on the couch in there. You just, I had surgery. Yeah. Most of y'all know or don't know, but uh, I had surgery four weeks ago. So I've, I've been, uh, I've been kind of recuperate and, uh, uh, doctor went in and my abdominal wall right in the front mm. in the sex center had basically come apart from a previous oh. surgery a couple of oh, years wow. ago. And my insides were basically just kind of pushing out. Ugh. It was a hernia, Ooh. but yeah. they ended up going in and, and pulling my stomach back together and pulling it inward like that and sewing it on the inside. Oh, So they didn't have to open me up again. They did it from the inside mm. and pulled everything inward. And oh, wow. I'm just, you know, I got these little quirks. It's just, man, anything it does, anything in your core from here yeah. to here, they mm. do work on. It's hard to get out of bed. It's, you know, it's hard yeah. to get comfortable. Yeah. But um, I certainly appreciate you calling me and, and saying, yeah. hey, you want to hop on with us tonight? It yeah. means a lot to me, you know, to Absolutely. be here and hang out. So yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks for know, being with us, man. That, that's how we operate, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> on the fly. Hey, man. <laughs> You gotta gotta do what you gotta but, do, and it works. But you know, yeah, you were in, in my thoughts too. This whole thing, because uh, without without what you do, we we wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I I just can't oh, yeah. on a scale that we do it, you know, and that we can fish anywhere in the country, like, you know, against each other and just kind of share what we, you know, because it really it ends up being against the fish, you know. But we just compare. Well, here's right. here's something that you might want to just think of. Uh-huh. You guys are fishing one tournament, okay? Just one. Yeah. yeah. The most tournaments we've run in one day is 156 tournaments in one day. Jeez. Holy cow. 
at the same wow. time. So think about how many fish can can come in one day through that whole pipe. So oh, man. when you're plugging in one fish, we've got 6,000 fish that came in in that one day, you know, or whatever that number might be. I don't know. I mean, I, I used to go back and kind of tally at the seed, play with the numbers. I'm, I like the numbers. Yeah. But we're, you know, I'll tell you a couple stats real quick. We're at one point, almost 1.3 million fish in seven years. Holy cow. Now, 1.3 million fish. We have 85,000 users. We have 1,200 directors. And we have 350 categories inside Tourney X. That's all over the country. And uh, wow. my trip my trip to Sweden was unbelievable. I want to throw a shout out to Hobie. Yeah. I have not publicly jumped online, but if you'll notice my jersey back here. See my jersey uh, right there? Mm-hmm. That's a one of a kind right there. It was signed by all the Hobie guys that fished that Hobie Net Worlds 9. And, wow. and I was real fortunate enough to, to be able to get one. And uh, it's just one of those things I hang on to. So it's a, it, was a, it was a great trip to, to get out of the country and, and meet all these other people. And to run our app in Sweden. And it ran great. So Ho- Hobie Worlds is like the pinnacle. That, that you know, to be that close to yeah. getting a spot there makes you want to get, get there so much more. That, Ever since I got into this and hearing about Hobie Worlds and going yeah. over to different countries and catching those fish, yeah, and, and competing against people from all over the world, that and you can get there th- through the Hobie tournaments, you know, either getting top three in AY or winning TOC. So uh, that that's kind of the uh, the pinnacle of where you can get to in our sport right now. You know, our goals. There's something Dwayne too, and you guys you know. When we started, like CJ and I used to go just like road trips and stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think of where kayak fishing is broadest and the things we've got in the sea. You know, we used to think it was a big deal to go to Gavin's Point or to Burchard Lake. And now it's like, you know, Seminole or or, yeah. or Kentucky Lake yeah. or Lake Fork. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, look at the mm-hmm. places we've been that we would never seen if we would have done this sport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all my bucket list lakes yeah. that we've been fishing. So yeah. it's just awesome to get a, even – have an opportunity to fish them, you know. By the way, I I, I looked for a long bill because this one's kind of getting shot, so I found one on eBay, but it's like a giant. Jeez, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's one of those <laughs> Japanese long bills right there. Yeah, that's like, <clears throat> and I got shit. Turn your head, look look to the side. Oh my <laughs> gosh, look at it. <laughs> it's like a duck. Go, go, who's that goofball? Okay, here's what we need. Here's what we need, Marty. Turn your head, drinking. Drinking the cream soda, okay, yeah, and somebody get that photo with a hat on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna you know recreate. I gotta do anything to reduce that skin cancer, man. Yeah, I'm gonna recruit you to go sit in my uh, decoy spread here in a few days. Look <laughs> like yeah. a mallard head. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, this one's kind of worn out. So, I, but I, I found that because they don't make them anymore. Bass Bros doesn't make them anymore. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. I found one, and it's like ten times the size of the other one. So I have to read right. down a little bit. snag your bill of your hat when you're fishing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll bump into the tree before the bow of the kayak. <laughs> hey, you can always be a sale, man. Just turn it around and <laughs> flip go. it up and go. Yeah. Flip it, tighten it down nice. and go. There you go. They're going to have to ban those in tournaments. He's going to be flying across <laughs> the lake. Yeah, it's like a. Man, that's a that's crazy. You got to get two of those. Wear one for the front, one for the back to cover your neck. Yeah. Cover your neck really good. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes look. Like... Oh man! There yeah, you go. There you go. There you that's go. Sherlock Holmes. Now you, now you got it. There we go. So anyway, all right. Well, hey, thanks you guys, and a great season, you guys. Um, I know it's coming down Thank to you. the end, but it'll start up faster than we think. Yeah, February yeah. coming up. I'm not gonna be Already prepping. Time. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and good, good luck. luck. We uh, we really appreciate you too, Dwayne and and uh, Rick. Thanks for coming on last second there, man. I was trying. To, hey, you thanks know. for having me, man. I appreciate last it. Last but not least, there, bud. Yeah. It's been fun. Yep. And so uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Absolutely. Good, Marty. All right, I'm Thank gonna you. end it. Thanks. Have Later. a good night, guys. Later. Peace.